Today we will be solving this problem called common divisors. So we are given an array of n positive integers and our task is to find two integers such that their greatest common divisor is as large as possible. So the first line of our input will contain an integer up to 2 times 10 to the 5th then we'll follow n integers each up to a million. In this example here, we can see that the greatest common divisor of 7 and 14 is 7, and that's why the answer is 7, and actually we cannot do anything better than that. So let's go to the drawing board and try to come up with a solution. So this was our example. And as we said, we need to find the greatest common divisor between any two pairs of ints here. So in order to do that, the first idea that comes to mind is to have two nested for loops. And each time we just check the greatest common divisors and update our answer. So this will actually look something like this. So we'll start by initializing our answer with one since the greatest common divisors of any two non-negative numbers is at least one then we will have two nested for loops and we will loop through all pairs and for each pair we will update our answer with the maximum of the answer and the gcd of ai and aj and as for the gcd here we can compute the gcd of any two numbers in all of log of min of a b if we had two values a b so an upper bound on our complexity here would be all of n squared times log of say the max of our array and since n here can be as large as 2 times 10 to the fifth then this approach will not work so in order to improve our approach let's try to get rid of this log factor first can we actually uh, accomplish all of n square? And in order to answer that, let's try to put an upper bound on our answer here. So let's try to put an upper bound on our answer here. We saw that the answer will be at least equal to 1 and at most equal to the largest value in the array here. Like in this example, it can be at most uh, 15 because since the answer is gonna be the GCD of two values it cannot be larger than the value it is the GCD of so the answer here is between 1 and 15 and this gives us an idea to actually check all the values in this range so in this case we can just check all the values from 1 to 15 and for each value we count the number of entries here that are divisible by 1. For example, for 1, we see that 3 is divisible by 1 and 14 is divisible by 1. Since we found at least two numbers that are divisible by 1, we know that 1 is a possible candidate of being the GCD of two values. So we can update our answer with 1. And we will keep going through all these values from 1 to 15. And this will actually give us the following algorithm. So our algorithm will look something like this. First, we will compute the maximum value of this array. Like in this case, it is equal to 15. Then we will initialize our answer with one. And we will look through all possible GCDs from two up to our max value. And each time we will initialize our count with zero. And this count keeps track of the entries that are divisible by G. And then we will look through all values from 0 to n, checking if that value is divisible by g. And if that's the case, we will just increment our counter. And at the end, if our counter is strictly larger than 1, that is, there are at least two values that are divisible by this g, then we can update our answer with, with the g. But here again, the complexity is, is still not optimal because we have two nested for loops and the total complexity here will be mx times n and since mx can be as large as 10 to the sixth and n is as large as 2 times 10 to the fifth then this is of order 10 to the 11th and it is larger than our threshold 
However, this approach is interesting in the sense that we can improve this, in, this inner loop. See here we look through all these values and we check if they are divisible by g. So for example here when g is equal to 2, we're gonna check if 3 is divisible by 2 and we're gonna check if 15 is divisible by 2 and 7 and 9. And the idea here is to think of a way of arranging this number in a, in a way such that we won't have to check all values. Because if we find a way of avoiding to check all values, we can reduce this n factor here. And the way to do that is to actually list all the values we have here. So let's go ahead and list all the values from 1 to 15. So these are all the values from 1 to 15 and I will go ahead and mark the values that are actually present in my array. So 3 is present, so is 7, 9, 14 and 15. And as I said, if, you want, if I want to calculate this count value for g is equal to 2, I can start from here and I will keep jumping with 2 because all the numbers that are divisible by 2 will be hit if I jump with 2. And this way, uh, my counter will only be incremented if I stumble upon values that have this X mark here. So the number of uh, values that are divisible by 2 will actually be just 1, and this accounts for this 14. And if I wanted to find the numbers that are divisible by 3, I would start with 3 and make jumps of 3 and this way I will actually count 1, 2 and 3 so there are actually 3 numbers that are divisible by 3 namely 3, 15 and 9 but you might say that this is pointless I just replaced this n with mx and this i++ with i plus j and basically I still have two for loops here so the complexity will be just mx times mx but this is not actually true. So let's actually go ahead and compute the actual number of instructions I do each time. So the first time when g is equal to 2 I will go from I will actually have I will go from i equals to 2 up to mx and I will increment my i with 2. So the number of jumps I will perform here is actually equal to mx divided by 2, which accounts for the number for the multiples of 2 in this range. Okay, so this will be equal to the numbers I check here. So here instead of ai, I'll just have that value i. Then for the for when g is equal to 3, I will actually check mx over 3 values and so on for 4 I will check mx over 4 and I will keep going this way up to mx over mx and you might say that this is actually the same as what we had before but this is not completely true so here since all these terms have an mx in them I can factor out an mx and this will look like 1 uh, actually 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus up to 1 over mx and this is what we call a harmonic series so in mathematics the harmonic series is the divergent infinite series that is equal to the sum of 1 over n so it is equal to 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 and so on and I am only interested in this part namely the sum up to some value k so if i want to calculate the sum of uh, 1 over n from n equals to 1 up to k like in this case i want to calculate mx times uh, here i'm missing a one but it's no different because this is actually smaller than what i want to calculate so let's say i want to calculate the sum from n equals 1 to mx of 1 over n from this article, I, can, I know that this is equal or this is less than or equal to ln of k plus 1. And ln here, of course, represents the natural logarithm. So as we can hear, this is because the partial sum of the series have logarithmic growth. 
So this means that this does not grow uh, fast at all. Uh, actually, this diverges very slowly. For example, the sum of the first 10 to the, 10 to the 43rd terms is less than 100. So actually, this is way smaller than mx and this is of order log of mx. So the total instructions I perform in this part is equal to mx times log of mx. And this way I reduced my complexity from being quadratic in mx or actually from being equal to mx times n to a complexity of mx times log mx. And as we said, mx can be as large as 10 to the 6th and the natural log of 10 to the 6th is about 18. So in total, this will be equal to 18 times 10 to the 6th, which is way smaller than our threshold, so we're fine. And this idea of performing jumps like this is very useful and we're gonna see it again when we encounter the sieve of Eratosthenes. And the power of this approach is that it can reduce the complexity of two for nested for loops from being quadratic to being of order n log n, as we saw in this example. So to summarize what we are going to do here, we're just gonna list all the numbers from 1 up to our max value and we're gonna mark the numbers that are present in our array with uh, by making them equal to 1 in a boolean array or something like this. Then we will look through all possible uh, values for the GCD from 2 up to MX and actually it is better to start with MX. This will allow us to avoid this operation of maxing the answer each time because if we start from from the end here the first value that we encounter that has more than one uh, value that is divisible by it will be our answer so for example if we start from mx and we found that the count is strictly greater than one then that would be our answer since it is the first value or the largest value that has more than one divisor. So we'll just start from mx and each time we will start from uh, the value we are at, for example g, and we will keep making jumps that are equal to g and checking each time if that value is present in our array in all of one. And if the number of uh, values that are present in our array and that are divisible by g is strictly greater than one, then we got our answer G. So let's go ahead and see how that would look like in code. So this is our program. We'll start by reading n, the length of our array. Then we're gonna declare a vector of int that we're gonna call range, and it's gonna have a length of a million. And we're gonna initialize it with zero, and this vector will actually keep track of the occurrences of all the values in this range. Then we'll scan the n values and each time we scan that value we're gonna increment that position in the range and that's why we need a vector of ints here because we may have duplicates. Then we're gonna loop through all possible GCDs from uh, the end and going down so we're gonna start with a million all the way down to one and each time we're gonna count the number of uh, values that are multiples of our GCD and to do that we're gonna have another for loop and we're gonna initialize the pointer to point at GCD and each time we're gonna increment our pointer by GCD meaning we're gonna accomplish a jump of, uh, uh, of length GCD as we saw and each time we're gonna increment the number of multiples with the number of occurrences in that position in our vector range and at the end we check if the number of multiples is greater than one and if that's the case we just output the answer because it's gonna be the largest possible GCD. So that's pretty much it, let's go ahead and submit. So that worked, thank you for watching, see you in the next video, bye bye.